Hello and welcome to Wellbeing Wednesday. We at the Museums of the University of St Andrews will be encouraging you to take 10 minutes for a break to listen to museum story time. The objects in our collections have had fascinating lives and this is our chance for us to tell you their stories. My name's Ailey and I'm going to be your host. Today I'll be telling you the story behind our sculpture of the much-loved children's literary character, Peter Pan. What is Peter Pan's connection to the University of St Andrews, I hear you ask? Well, he was the creation of the Scottish author J.M. Barry, James Matthew Barry, who grew up in Kerrymuir in Angus, which is not too far up the road from St Andrews. He went to the University of Edinburgh, graduating in 1882, and he then moved to London where his literary career took off. Barry then became the rector of the University of St Andrews between the years of 1919 and 1922, which obviously was a fraught time when we were in the throes of the First World War. Peter Pan, the boy who wouldn't grow up, is a character the audience has first encountered in 1902 in a novel called The Little White Bird. Barry's most famous work, Peter Pan, started its life as a stage show in 1904, which he then turned into a novel in 1914 called Peter and Wendy. Now, Peter and Wendy begins with the passage, All children, except one, grow up. They soon know that they will grow up. And the way that Wendy knew was this. One day when she was two, she was playing in the garden and she plucked a flower and ran with it to her mother. I suppose she must have looked rather delightful. For Mrs Darling put her hand to her heart and cried, Oh, why can't you remain like this forever? This was all that passed between them on the subject, but henceforth Wendy knew that she must grow up. You always know after you are two. Two is the beginning of the end. Charming. In a touching gesture, the copyright for Peter Pan was left to Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital in London. Our sculpture is a smaller version of the statue that can be found in Kensington Gardens in London. The mood is entirely whimsical. Peter is playing a little wind instrument. However, Barry apparently remarked that the statue didn't show the devil in Peter. The story of how the original statue came to be in Kensington Gardens is also rather whimsical. It was put in place overnight with no ceremony, no fuss, in order that the children would go to the gardens in the morning and think that the statue had been put there by the fairies. Its existence was announced in the Times newspaper. There is a surprise in store for the children who go to Kensington Gardens to feed the ducks in the Serpentine this morning. A May Day gift by Mr J M Barry, a figure of Peter Pan blowing his pipe on the stump of a tree with fairies and mice and squirrels all around. It is the work of Sir George Frampton and the bronze figure of the boy who would never grow up is delightfully conceived. Our version of the statue was presented by J M Barry himself to the students of University Hall on the 3rd of May 1922. This was the final year of his term as Rector of the University and the year that he gave the now world famous address titled Courage. Address to the red gowns of St Andrews on the backdrop of the First World War and in a packed hall full of people who had somehow felt the impact of it in front of Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig, the University Chancellor at the time. Barry implores the red gowns. My own theme is courage, as you should use it in the great fight that seems to be coming between youth and their betters. By youth, meaning of course you, and by your betters, us. I want you to take up this position that youth have for too long left exclusively in our hands the decisions in national matters that are more vital to them than to us. Things about the next war, for instance, and why the last one ever had a beginning. I use the word fight because it must, I think, begin with a challenge. 
but the aim is the reverse of antagonism. It's partnership. I want you to hold that the time has arrived for youth to demand that partnership and to demand it courageously. That to gain courage is what you came to St Andrews for. Another choice excerpt from the address is this. A final passing thought. Were an old student given an hour in which to revisit the St Andrews of his day, would he spend more than half of it at lectures? He's more likely to be heard clattering up bare stairs in search of old companions. But if you could choose your hour from all the 500 years of this seat of learning, wandering at your will from one age to another, how would you spend it? Add another 100 years on, and as a closing thought for you today, consider that question yourself. See you next time. Bye.